Good morning to, to all. Uh, just to uh, welcome you all today, I know that Gabriel Ferrero from the UN uh, High Level Task Force wanted to join, so I'm assuming he's linked in through the Geneva call. This morning, I just want to have a short introduction of a few slides and a few comments on the uh, Busan High Level, High Level Forum and what it means for the agriculture and rural development uh, sector. I'm moving on to slide two now, and I can now move on to the, uh, the background. I want to say a few general words about the, 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 uh, the Busan process, um, because several of the people on the call this morning uh, weren't able to, to, to be there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what, what Busan was and what Busan uh, wasn't. Uh, Busan was very much a discussion uh, on the progress since the Paris Declaration and the Accra Agenda for, for Action, to see what the results had been of the targets that were set for 2011-2012. It wasn't necessarily a discussion on individual aid uh, categories like agriculture or education or health. It was driven, particularly since the Accra meeting, looking at the processes underlying the, the uh, delivery of effective, effective aid. Um, the meeting uh, on that basis started off with several of the, of the key presenters, Hillary Clinton, President of Korea, Brian Atwood from OECD, indicating that we hadn't met many of the targets. In fact, only one of the targets established at, at Paris in terms of uh, effective aid had actually been met. Uh, and, and therefore, clearly, there was a lot more, more, lot more work to be done. What came out, and I just want to, in the, in the opening uh, sessions, uh, was very much the importance of, of, of partnership in the, in, the, uh, in the meeting. And uh, both the president of, of Korea, who uh, pledged to increase Korea's bilateral aid by 100% by 2015, and Hillary Clinton, when she spoke about the fact that donors themselves were not going to be able to meet the MDD char targets, it was going to need... The, the private sector became to become more involved, set a theme for Busan of, of uh, increased involvement by the, the different stakeholders uh, in the delivery of, of, of aid. Um, I'm going to move on to, to the, the, the third slide now, just to talk a bit, just a little bit about what the platform uh, team were doing. We had uh, Pascal and Alina uh, in, in Busan. Um, with a mandate to report through the web uh, on all the ARD-related issues and to uh, collaborate in the various side events and mini-debates that the platform was hosting together with civil society and with WFP and the OECD and, and the APSI group. And in doing so, uh, I think did a, a very good job of, of in all those events, of first of all, highlighting what the platform was. Uh, we, we brought all the, the roll-up posters and, and information, uh, which I think was well, well received by civil society participants and by the donors themselves. But although agriculture was not on the agenda at Busan, uh, I think the, the, the publicity and the communication that we did at, at Busan gave a clear, a clear uh, message to the participants about the importance of the agricultural agricultural sector. I want to talk a little bit, moving on to slide uh, four, again, just a little bit about what happened during those three days as a bit of a background. This first day slide just talks what, ha it was more a reflective look on progress since, since Paris. There was a whole series of, uh, of, of plenary sessions around those, those themes throughout, throughout the day. I think two of the, the, the two that I went to, and I think got a lot of attention, were the results theme and the, the private sector theme. I get the impression that uh, the, the bilateral donors attending Busan continue to be highly focused on, on the results agenda. And increasingly, as I said, following the, the, the introductory words by Hillary Clinton, focused very much on the role of the private sector. 
And when I was talking to various delegates about which sessions they were going to, many debates or side events, they tended to say, well, you know, our priority is going to be the results section, the, the private sector discussions, and to a lesser extent, issues of fragility and, and, and conflict. Which to some extent, is really the unfinished business of, of Paris and Accra. I mean, I think there's, a, there's an understanding that we've been making progress on ownership, on country systems, uh, and the, the work that needs to be done is on results um, and accountability and a realization that the private sector is important to the, to the, to the overall process, together with civil society. So that, they, that gave the, the theme then for the, the second day when they went uh, into what, had been, what was known in Busan as, as building blocks. And there was plenaries on the building blocks on transparency results, as you can see here, South-South cooperation. The, the, thing, the important point to remember about these building blocks is that they are intended to be uh, a recognition of what still needs to be done uh, in the aid effectiveness agenda. And all these building blocks were basically asking uh, delegates, again, civil society, donors, uh, private sector, to sign up to the building blocks, to be part of a future process. So one of the, the issues that both for platform members and uh, either directly in agriculture or in their other operations is to be considering, do you want to be associated and, uh, and become part of the process of working on these building blocks. Uh, there is literature available uh, on, on the websites of, of Busan, and I think we can also find it through the platform if you wish. It gives some of the background as to who is leading the, the, the various building blocks. For example, DFID and uh, an island uh, are leading the building block on results. And you'll see a lot of uh, uh, work and communication, I think, coming through from that building block on results. This took us into the, the, uh, the final day, which is slide six, where we, there was a, a plenary panel uh, followed by the, 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 closing, the closing ceremony. The plenary panel uh, was uh, hosted by Homi Karas from the Brookings Institute, who had joined uh, an EFAD platform uh, mini debate on, on the first day, talking about scaling, result, scaling up results in agriculture, which is something the Brookings Institute has been working specifically with EFAD on. He uh, had three panels, in fact, but in his first panel, he specifically talked about the Global Partnership for Agriculture and the, the building blocks that exist at the moment in the agricultural sector, that we have the G20 uh, 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 emphasis on agriculture. We have the work that is being done by the, uh, the AFSI and, and, and the CFS. Um, we have the private sector, we have the civil society, we have de facto formed a global partnership for agriculture. And he was posing the question to the panelists, how do we take that global partnership for agriculture forward, and particularly in Africa? So yeah, that was an important statement. In the final plenary panel, agriculture was coming back onto the, uh, coming back onto the, uh, the, the agenda. What was also discussed at the, 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 uh, the, the, the final plenary, and indeed was one of the big drive, the big output from, from the Busan uh, high-level forum, was what is called the outcome document. And Selena today has sent you by email uh, an English version. There are French and Spanish available, but the English version of the, the outcome document. It's worth having a look at this, to some extent, for what it includes, and again, for what it doesn't include. Uh, the, uh, it, it took until, as ever, the, only a few hours before the final plenary for this outcome document to be agreed. If, for those of you that have got a copy, uh, there's... There's some positive statements in there about the themes that we've been talking about in Busan, the transparency, the country ownership. If, for those of you who've got a copy, for example, paragraph three on the first page was a, a section put in by uh, China, India, and I think Brazil as a non-negotiable text. This talked very much about, this section talked about the South-South Accord, and basically was saying that Paris Declaration principles were not necessarily or could only be voluntarily applied to any country involved in a South-South a intervention. So some pushback from some emerging donors about the applicability of, of Paris principles 
uh, to them. And this came through again when talking about ownership results and accountability uh, in, in paragraph 18, in fact, in paragraph 18b, where for many weeks the basic text had talked about the importance of transparent country-led and country-level results frameworks and platforms. In the final text, the following phrase was inserted at the beginning, where initiated by the developing country. Again, this was a, a little bit of the, a pushback on the imposition by donors of their own results frameworks on countries that may or may not want to uh, subscribe to those results frameworks. That's, I think, is the lesson for you as we move forward with at least with the CADEP process as well. Be cautious about the, the or rather importance of ensuring that we get the development country buy into these various res results frameworks. The other point I would make, the final point on the, on the outcome document, is the number of dates of things to do. Uh, several of the discussions about transparency and cooperation, paragraphs 23, 24, 25, all talk about activities that will be carried out in 2012, 2013. In other words, a lot of unfinished business from Busan. And I think this is probably summed up in the very final page of the outcome document on paragraph 35B, where here we get the big, if you like, non-deliverable of Busan, where it says that the, uh, uh, those in Busan agree by June 2012 on a selective and relevant set of indicators and targets which we will monitor progress. In other words, what Busan did not deliver, which was slightly different from Paris, which did deliver a set of targets, Busan did not deliver targets and basically said by June next year we will have a selective and relevant set of indicators. And if you follow some of the, the webcasts that have been put out by civil society, Oxfam in particular, who joined some of the events that the platform and donors uh, uh, hosted, are basically saying, look, Busan is still uh, very much uh, a work in progress, and it didn't deliver as, as much as it uh, as much as it should have as much as it should have done. Just to, to, to recap on on on, on slide seven again. And thank you, Pascal, for that photograph. Um, uh, just to recap on, on wh where we did uh, make an impact, I think, at HLF4, through side debates and many debates with a direct agricultural rural development focus. We had many debates on agricultural results scaling up, as I mentioned, with Homi Karas, with Heifer International coming in from the States to talk about scaling up uh, livestock programs, and with uh, civil society represented by uh, Asia, uh, uh, and the Philippines. We talked uh, building on the work that the platform's done uh, with the knowledge pieces with ODI, improved governance and development effectiveness, working with the Better Aid Civil Society Group. And finally, we had a final side event where we looked at uh, getting the results in, in agriculture, food security, and nutrition, where we had a series of panelists uh, from uh, bilateral donors, um, from civil society, and from country level talking about their programs in the agricultural agricultural sector. So just to conclude this presentation and then moving on to a discussion, so what do, and these are, if you like, my personal opinions of where we've come from, from uh, Busan and what the outcomes are. First of all, I think that Busan, I mean, has validated the multi-stakeholder approach. Now, for those of us working in the agricultural sector, this is sort of mother's milk and apple pie. We work with a multi-sector approach. We know that our programs and interventions don't work unless we have a multi-stakeholder approach. This theme, again, was coming through all the events that I picked up in Busan. I went, for example, to the, the financial management and procurement uh, uh, discussions. And yes, they talked about multi-stakeholder approach. So, I mean, it, it's, it's something I think that agriculture has to offer as we move forward uh, from Busan. Clearly, there was a validation of the importance of country ownership and use of country systems. And I think there's a, there's a uh, across the agricultural sector, from the multilaterals uh, who use country systems almost exclusively uh, through to the bilaterals, uh, there is a strong use of country, ownership, uh, country systems by, by uh, our, our members. Uh, I saw... Uh, Alignment and harmonization of stakeholders still not strong. 
I've got to say that, for example, in the agricultural side event on agriculture, I saw six interventions that were almost, were certainly not aligned with each other. They spoke well about particular issues, but they tended to speak about issues facing those individual donor institutions uh, and speaking very much to individual institutional initiatives. So I think uh, still, to say nothing of the role of the private sector, so I think there's still work to be done in terms of alignment of stakeholders in the agricultural sector. Definitely uh, results and results measurement led by countries was, was emphasized, but the details of how to do that remain terribly vague. And as I said, they're suggesting that by June 2012, we may have some idea of what those indicators are. And I think we need to be thinking what we already know in the agricultural sector about results manage, measurement. We've got initiatives now on the Global Strategy for Agricultural Statistics. We've had other work done. I think for the agricultural sector, the glass is half full rather than half empty, and we should be con considering how we can bring that knowledge of agricultural results into the, into the main debate. And finally, uh, clearly the civil society present in Busan, though personally I'd say less vociferous than I've seen them in the working parties and the build-up to the uh, Busan process, Clearly, uh, there needs to, there's a scope for understanding what accountability mechanisms will look like uh, for delivering results. And again, I think with the experience that we have in the agricultural sector of working with the private sector and civil society, we're potentially slightly ahead of the game and may well have something to offer. So with those opening remarks, which are going to probably be a little bit too long, I'll uh, close there and put myself on to mute and hand back to Selena. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Brian, um, for this presentation. I think you managed to wrap up three days of Wuzan into a 15-minute synthesis um, with all the important ARD information for all our members and participants today. Thank you, really, thank you very much and for the interesting presentation as well. Um, I'd like to now open the floor to discussion um, Q&A session. Alwyn um, would like to say something from AusAid. Alwyn, you have the floor. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you well. Okay, thanks very much. Um, Brian, a question to you. Uh, you talked about the, the, pri the emphasis on private sector being a key theme at Busan. Um, you also talked about the side events that the platform ran, and I know uh, one of the recent pieces has been about the role of the private sector in ARD. I was just wondering if um, if you could tell us a little bit more about the discussions around the private sector, and also whether or not that paper that the platform produced, you know, was uh, was tabled, was discussed, uh, and what sort of reaction it generated. Was it sort of deemed a useful sort of contribution to that debate, or just give us a bit of insight as to what you took out of uh, those discussions would be helpful. Thanks. Alwyn, thanks for that. I wish I could be slightly more upbeat uh, on the private sector. Uh, I, uh, courtesy of, of uh, Ernan, uh, I was able to see what the inv invitee list was to, to Busan, and I was filtering anything to do with private sector. Uh, I didn't find a lot of private sector walking the corridors, uh, to be honest. Um, we did not have that uh, platform uh, third paper on the private sector available in time for, for Busan. So we didn't distribute uh, the document. Um, and if you like, the final d downer, if you like, the, the section in the outcome document on the private sector is awfully bland. Uh, it's it's it tells us nothing that we didn't any already know, and I think Alwyn that speaks to the, the the clearly the lack of involvement in the private sector in the whole process leading up to Busan and some of the difficulties that an institution like the OEC back in Paris, which is member based, has of inviting the the private sector in. It's made a big success of bringing civil society in. But apart from uh, one presentation earlier in the summer from the World Economic Forum, it's had very little uh, uh, input uh, from the private sector. Again, you know, I know through the work that FAO is doing on foreign direct investment, uh, there are some key agricultural private sector people out there, um, but they were not engaged in, in, in Busan. So 
I think that's it, it's a little bit of a disappointment uh, and clearly uh, an area that we need more more work to to do on. Thank you. Yeah, hi. It is uh, Ria Ketting. I tell you Hello. a bit late, but I'm also on the, on the call. I'm on both. So I have a question oh, about great. participation of, 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 of governments, of African governments in these side events. Where, was there an appetite and, and have you come up to, with a kind of an, a plan to, to take it further, uh, forward on these results and results measurements? Thanks, Maria. Yes, I would said actually I was, uh, I was impressed by Paul Kagame's uh, remarks at the opening session. Uh, from Rwanda, who very much set the scene in, and spoke to the issue of country ownership and country leadership. Uh, his message was, go forward with this agenda if you do it without us at your peril. Uh, I was, for example, I went in, as a second example, I went into the, the uh, International uh, Aid Transparency Initiative. It's a comment I made here on this last slide. The Transparency Initiative is really uh, getting some profile uh, at Busan. And in that side event, there was a couple of very good in in interventions from Rwanda again, and also from Congo, of how governments are taking forward the Transparency Initiative and using the information coming through from uh, Transparency International to have a better idea of effectively the forward planning of, of aid donor flows. Uh, so, yes, and in the side event that the, uh, we had on, on the last day with uh, WFP, OECD and IFAD, we had the Minister of Finance for Bangladesh uh, talking. Again, we had uh, the Permanent Secretary for uh, Agriculture, who was very good, from Rwanda talking. So, yes, I saw some, some fairly good hands-on comments uh, from, from, from governments. Uh, coming through in several of, of those uh, those debates, Maria. Thank you. Question, it's, uh, it, Brian, it was just going on from your uh, previous statement. I was just wondering if you felt that, that the developing countries attending Busan went away feeling more empowered in terms of their, their, uh, their role in development coordination in their countries. Yeah, good question. Very good question. I, first of all, I would say, and I say this, uh, Gary, having sat through Paris and Accra as well, bearing in mind that Accra was Africa hosted, they were definitely they were recognised. Uh, obviously, Paul Kagame's introductory remarks were powerful and understood. I would say they have gone away knowing that they have, if you like, the Busan agenda behind them. And if they do not get that recognition, if you like, back home in the meeting room, if they want, they have a powerful tool to go back into other forums and say, look, look, we have not got the respect or the leadership that we believe was designated to us through the Busan process or that my colleagues tell me was designated to us. And so I think there is, there is again, that's the glass is half full, I would say, uh, they have been, in, their, their, their power has been recognized, and it's, I guess it's up to us to, to give them the space for that to go through. I said, otherwise, they have, they, have, they have the accountability mechanisms to come around and say, no, donors have reneged on their, their promises of Busan. And I think you'll see civil society very quick to pick up those failures, if you like, if we don't, if we don't give the lead to the, to the, uh, to the partner well, country, Gary. Gary. Thank you. Brian, just to, to follow on then, did, did you feel that, that the donors appreciated the shift from aid coordination to development coordination and understood what that meant? Uh, great, a double question. Uh, they appreciate the shift from aid to development because they are clearly within their own fora very keen to show results. As I, I was impressed by Andrew Mitchell from DFID London who was there for all, at least two out of the three days, heavily involved in a lot of the, of the discussions, particularly on delivering results, which, as I said, was led by DFID. You, you clearly see, and I think this was stressed by Hillary Clinton in the opening address, uh, that, that donors realize that they have to go back to their parliaments, their constituencies, and their taxpayers 
to, the, to show that there are results being delivered. And therefore, you're moving away from effective aid to effective development to see those outcomes. The second part of your question, do the donors realize what that means? I think the answer from what I saw is not necessarily. Um, the, if you like, the political angle does not understand the differences that, that, require, that are required as you move into development effectiveness, where you're going to become much more dependent on, on local capacity, uh, coordination, and a recognition that much of the outcomes that are required don't happen overnight. They take several years to uh, distill. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, who else would like to say something? Guy, I see you still have your hand raised. Um, if you'd like to make another point, go ahead. Ernan um, would like to say something. Go ahead, Ernan. Right. Yeah, uh, thanks very much, Brian, for the presentation. Um, uh, on, on top of the points that were made there, I thought, I thought the, I wondered about the language in the outcome document in relation to the, um, the move from aid effectiveness to, to, to development effectiveness. Uh, because the outcome document talks about this uh, new global partnership, which is for effective development cooperation, which is, uh, uh, as it shows on your, on your last slide there, in the photograph on your last slide, and that's, that's something to me that is, is uh, still substantially different from development effectiveness. And um, it's still really focused on, on the relationship between, um, uh, between donors and, uh, and developing country governments, uh, and, and not so much about the, uh, uh, or not so clearly on the, on the development And um, just a couple of other general points. One of them, I, I agree with what, you, what Brian said very much about how Kazakhstan itself has uh, really didn't have any kind of a sectoral focus uh, at all. So the, the fact that um, that agriculture and rural development <laughs> is isn't, isn't really surprising. And, and on the side events, certainly that um, that I saw, the, the one on, on agriculture and rural development. Uh, was uh, as well attended uh, as most of them, uh, and, and, uh, and more than, uh, and better attended. Uh, and the other thing is, is I, I think that there's a general recognition that the um, kind of the solidity or the clear, the clarity of the commitment um, uh, and the, the ambition of the commitment was somewhat compromised in the plan in order to get a broader buy-in from. Um, uh, from the uh, the new donors. So this situation now of having uh, six months to um, to try and uh, tie down what commitments are actually made or, or, or will be made, I think, is a very important very important issue. And I think that it's something that uh, uh, it would be useful to try to engage with, to provide inputs into that process, to try and get some um, uh, some focus on on results in in agriculture, uh, rural development, or food security. Uh, and the issues that we're, we're talking about. And I suppose that's something which the, the platform um, can take a role in. Uh, and, and particularly, I think, around the, the whole multi-stakeholder approach to it. To me, that was one of the things that was most interesting at the, um, um, at, at the side event. Actually, there were, there were a couple of things. One of them was the, certainly the idea that, uh, that, that donors uh, want results in terms of their own uh, domestic accountability. Um, and and are, are prepared to do work on it and, and establish results frameworks and, and to pursue them. There's also clear recognition, I think, from certainly the people who were there and uh, the general tenor of, of, um, of that side of it, and I'd say wider than that in, in, in Busan, was, was that the only way of actually seriously achieving that is by having um, uh, nationally owned uh, results frameworks. And that, that although donors may have done their work, done some work on this already, that they need to interface that with country realities uh, as well. And there's a real desire, I think, to try and figure out how best uh, to do that uh, and to do that in, uh, in, in, in joint and constructive way. Uh, at the side event, there's a very interesting presentation by um, Greg Adams from, from Oxfam on what he called, um, uh, I think what he referred to as political value chains. And with the idea that uh, um, uh, that it's really important to get you know um, the, the agricultural stakeholders and uh, 
as a target group for, for agricultural development and food security actions to get those then involved in the processes of defining and, uh, and uh, monitoring, uh, monitoring the results. And, and that was reflected by a couple of the bilateral donors as well, not only in that session, but also in the uh, it was a, a thematic session on the first day on rights-based approaches, and it came out very, very strongly in that. But Greg Adams' point wasn't only that you have to get them involved in, in, the, in the process, but that if you are going to have results frameworks for issues like food security uh, and raising rural incomes and, and poverty reduction, well, then you have to have results uh, around the political process uh, as well. And I think that's a very uh, interesting value point. And I think, again, that's something that, uh, uh, that that's the work that the platform has done uh, in the, the knowledge piece uh, also speaks to that. And I think it's something that could be, could be very useful for you. Thanks. Thanks, Anand. Brian, do you want to reply to that? Or should we leave that for an open point for other participants uh, to comment on? Just very briefly, well, well spoken, Ernan. I thought, I thought the input of Oxfam during that side event that was, was excellent. Yeah. And uh, we've had a lot of bilateral contact with EFAD, with, with, the, with Oxfam. And you're quite right. That was a very good presentation by Greg on the, on the political value chain. Absolutely right. Thanks. Great. Um, we have one more um, question or comment from Alwyn. And then um, if we have one more maybe after that, and then we should bring this to a close. I'll just hand over to Alwyn. Uh, just uh, really a question really to Ern and also to Brian. Um, I'm intrigued about the discussion on results. Uh, I'm guilty of not reading any of the papers that were submitted uh, for the uh, for Busan on results. But um, I'm, I'm just wondering whether whether how the issue of uh, attribution and contribution was uh, how that was dealt with, how that was discussed, because um, the results agenda is very much about taxpayers in uh, in developed countries wanting to know what their what difference their dollars are making, and that's really quite a detailed technical issue. Um, and so was the discussion more than just about let's have a results framework for ARD or for health or whatever, and was it was it getting into some of those very, very tricky and difficult issues of results measurement and results attribution and contribution analysis, if you like, or was it much more of a general sort of talk? Thanks, Owen. Over to you, Brian. <laughs> I'd rather hope you're going to say over to Ernan. <laughs> <laughs> over to Ernan, one of the two. Uh, I, I, it's, I, must, I didn't, and again, Ernan, come back, I didn't pick up the, that important distinction which I've heard elsewhere on, on attribution in other fora. Uh, I, I, through EFAB, we work on the MDB MFDR working group where we discuss some of those issues a lot. It didn't, I didn't hear it come out uh, either in the, the uh, look back discussions on results on the first day or in, in the building block, but I may have, may have missed, missed something. What did come through was this approach uh, on results based allocations that if I'm using the right te terminology, which has been coming out of mainly from the US led at the moment, that countries are paid for or funds are transferred when specific results are achieved. Uh, that was mentioned, uh, I think, both in, at least in the plenary session on the results building block, and I did hear it referred to in some of the side events. Uh, and I think there is some division on the applicability of, of applying that process. Uh, the World Bank, I know, for example, have set up a, a program, and they spoke about that on the first day, about where they are starting to look at delivering finance only when uh, a partner country has delivered those results. So yes to your, the first part of your question, that the, 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 uh, like the, attrib not, the attribution was, was beginning to come through, although that term wasn't used. Uh, but it was we didn't get into much further detail on results measurement or results uh, delivery. I said, hence this rather disappointing statement at the end of the the road ahead, which talks that we've simply got to go back and come up with a set of indicators before June on what we'll be be measuring. Ernan, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think I'd agree with the. I, I think um, uh, Al, on your question is very interesting. Well, I, I think the attribution debate, you know, is, is was something that was very much discussed a number of years ago when, when the, the moves into 
uh, into program aid were, were much, much bigger. I think it still is an issue, and, but I don't think it is really discussed. And I think you're probably seeing bilaterals being worried about that and looking for ways of, um, uh, of, of trying to have, you know, while, while conti continuing program aid, having other things which they are able to directly attribute uh, results uh, to, them, to themselves. Um, I think, um, but I think there is a general agreement that, uh, uh, or there would seem to be a general approach that, uh, that what's more important are the national country's own uh, results frameworks. And that uh, if, if you can show progress, if you have good results frameworks there, and if you can show progress on achieving results in a country overall, then um, you know the, the contribution idea that, that you that as a major donor there uh, as a support of those systems, you can be associated with that. I think that's still quite a strong, uh, that's quite a strong um, approach, a way of looking at it that, that, uh, that people have. I would imagine in the case of the US, though, it's very much playing both of, both of those sorts of, um, uh, both of those sorts of um, uh, um, approaches. Uh, I was struck, so uh, you asked about uh, measurement as well. Um, I mean, clearly there's quite a lot in the side event about the, the questions of data and, uh, and analytical capacity and uh, of measurement and things like that. Uh, the uh, US intervention at that, Raj Shah, he was very clear that there are, uh, that it is uh, um, possible to realistically and in real time measure results and that, that uh, this can be done and that the US uh, is, is doing it and intends to continue doing it. And also it was very clear that baseline information is available through um, through the increase of uh, instruments like household budget surveys uh, um, which which do give uh, good evidence on, uh, on, on 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 results at household level. I don't know. I mean, uh, in in terms of the uh, attribution and uh, attribution contribution, that it wasn't really discussed at all uh, at this, uh, as far as I'm aware either. And uh, this didn't come up in, in, in the results agenda. The focus is much more on kind of national results system. Thank you, Ellen. I just um, I just see that there's one more comment or question from Pascal, and then I think we'll bring this um, highly interesting discussion to a close. Pascal, I'll hand over to you now. Thank you very much, Selina. I just wanted to add on quickly one observation from me being very much on the on the side event uh, side. I don't know if Brian can qualify this a little bit. There was a one strong commitment that I heard from uh, John Mitchell in a side event about statistics. Um, where he mentioned that DFID would uh, certainly put a lot of emphasis into getting, uh, getting statistics much more emphasized. And uh, two of the areas that he, that he mentioned at the time, uh, one of the two areas that he mentioned was agriculture. And maybe that's an interesting part of information. Just wanted to uh, fill, that, fill that in. And obviously some of this information is all on the website and the reports that we filed. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. And thank you, everyone else, um, for your questions, your comments, your remarks. Um, this whole virtual briefing has been recorded and will be available as podcast soon on our website. Um, if you haven't seen so already, we did a, a whole um, few days, a whole set of reporting on Busan on specifically agriculture-focused events and side events with a perspective on ARD from, from our um, platform secretariat members who were over there. So if you haven't seen that already, um, I encourage you to have a look. And it's across there's other things on Durban as well, if, if that's something you're interested in. So this will be up as podcast. And I just want to thank you all again. If you have any questions, if you'd like to have the presentation again, don't hesitate to email me um, or Brian, the presenter, of course. And um, thanks very much for joining us today.